Hi, this is Katrina Sargent, owner and creator of Double Doll Custom Creations. Today we're going to be doing a matching phone grip and pin using UV resin and the crackle technique. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. Like always, I will have everything linked in the description below, including a few discount codes. So this is actually going to be the first in my Tumblr mystery box series. I'm adding all I do for my mystery boxes in its own playlist, including bath bombs, soaps, sublimation. If that interests you or you make Tumblr mystery boxes, stay tuned, I will upload a lot in the future. First, we're gonna start out with the prepped and painted black pins. I'm using Imagination 3D's pin attachment, which I've added a silicone straw topper to the base so epoxy does not attach to the pin attachment itself. I'm also using silicone plugs to the top so you don't get any overflow in your pen. You're gonna be using regular white glue and white acrylic paint. You need two paint brushes, one solely for the glue, one solely for the paint. The thicker you paint your glue on, the larger the cracks are going to be. But be careful not to do too thick because it can slide as it's drying. Really thin is gonna give you more refined crackle. Once you have it completely coated with glue, you're gonna take a good amount of white acrylic paint on your paintbrush and run it along in one smooth motion. I am going back over and running my paintbrush on it a second time on a few places because I have a lot of extra paint. I usually do not do this though. I am going to rush the crackling with using a hair dryer. If you use a heat gun or hair dryer and not let it just sit off by itself to dry and crack, be careful not to add too much heat. You can bubble the paint up. See how gorgeous these crackles are? Ha, oh, so pretty. So now moving on to the pop socket. I'm gonna do the same thing, but I need to prep my pop socket first, that, which means sanding and wiping it clean with a baby wipe or a rag with alcohol. Phone grip, you have to be conscious of the edges with your glue and your paint. They're easy to clean up any spillovers with the baby wipe after it's dry or even while it's wet, but you do need to be careful not to go on top of the phone grip itself. You absolutely don't have to use heat to speed up the process. You can put these in front of a fan for a couple hours. You can just set them off to the side overnight. I'm impatient, <laughs> so I add heat. But again, if you add too much heat, your paint can bubble up and it doesn't look right. Now, once they're dry, I'm moving on to the UV resin. This is my absolute favorite UV resin. I'm an affiliate. I promote what I love, which is the Imagination 3D pin attachment and my UV resin. If you go through the description, you'll find links to both of them, plus discount codes for both of them. Before I add my UV resin, I am just going to clean up any extra acrylic paint that could be in the top or the bottom edge. I always wear gloves and my respirator anytime I'm using UV resin as well as epoxy. I add a very thin amount. I build mine up that way. So once I have my, my pen completely coated, I am then gonna use a baby wipe to wipe my hands off and torch it to pop any micro bubbles that might be in the UV resin. Let it cure under that light for three minutes. And then I'm gonna add an additional thin coat just to make sure it is 100% smooth and you don't feel any of those crackle ridges before I move on to my decals. Moving on to the phone grip. I add a 
big glob right in the middle of the phone grips. And then I take these silicone makeup brushes and pull from the middle to the edge. If you add as much to cover the entire thing, you're gonna have spillover. So this kind of gives you the full coverage without having too much. You can always put some on. It's really hard to take it away. So if you see any edges pulling back, add a little bit more right in the middle and pull it out. I am not trying to get that full dome yet. I am just trying to make it level this first time before I move on to decals. I suggest taking a sharp craft knife and running it along that bottom edge before you try to remove your pen attachment. The UV resin is attached to it and sometimes it can take away some of the paint or if you're doing glitter, take away some of the glitter. I don't clean mine up after every coat. <laughs> if you do, this might not be a problem, but I usually do my primary coats and then clean up the edges before I move on to my final coats. Moving on to decals. I made a previous video on how to do this peekaboo. I'm using the exact same listing. So if you already bought it, you have almost everything except for the saying I'm using. I'm using the bees and I am using the honeycomb SVG to cut out in gold holographic vinyl. And then I'm printing off the bees and a saying I got on Etsy right here. I'll have it linked as well for my pop sockets and my pins. So all I'm doing is resizing. So the easiest way to do that, to try to find the perfect size, is you're gonna make a circle of the size of pop socket. Mine is a 1.5 by 1.5. If you hit the shift key as you're making a circle, it will make a correct circle and not an oval. Bring it over across your decal, center it, so you get an idea of what it will look like on your pop socket. I want it slightly smaller, so I can have some of the honeycomb details behind the water slide. And then remove that circle once you have the perfect size. And we're gonna be printing these off plus the bees on clear water slide. Now everything is cured and smooth before I move on to my decals. I did print off a slightly smaller main decal and the one we did on the computer together. I ended up going with the larger one. I liked it better. So I am just trimming up the extra clear water slide off of the decals. Here is my honeycomb in that amazing holographic vinyl. So it kind of gives the idea that you did glitter underneath, but you didn't have to do a peekaboo. So clear water slides, you need a container of lukewarm water. I like to use these cotton gloves like on Amazon. I use contact paper as my transfer sheet. You're gonna to wanna to add as much honeycomb as possible to your pin before you add your water slides. Keep in mind where you wanna keep your main decal. Don't put honeycomb over that. But your bees are gonna go over honeycomb. You don't have to really worry about placement. I do it completely random. Basically, whatever sticks to the pin stays on the pin. <laughs> but if you have more of a pattern you wanna go with, you might wanna stick with that. Don't ever force a water slide to release from the backing. When it's ready, it will slide completely off the backing easily. And then I take it with the backing still on, add it to my pin, and then remove the backing and use that cotton glove, that rag, that coffee filter, whatever you have on hand to remove the water from behind the water slide and the pin. You can kind of adjust water slides to a point be gentle with water slides because it can rip. If you're using an inkjet printer, you will have to seal your water slides before you can use them. I'm using a laser printer, so I don't have to seal them at all. When you're placing your bees around your pen, I like to keep them in different directions so they're not so unified. They can go over the honeycomb, they can stay on the crackle, whatever you would like. If you like to use those little dotted lines from the listing, 
add a couple of those so it looks like the bee is flying onto the area. If you have to add more honeycomb after you have water slides on your pen, be careful. The contact paper will remove your water slides or remove the ink. I'm only going to add a couple to my pop socket. I don't want it too overcrowded. So I am just adding a few and then I will add my main decal and then add a few bees around the edges. If you have any vinyl honeycomb over the edges, I just take a sharp craft knife and cut away that edge. It just helps you in the long run when you're doing your final coat of UV resin. Also, if you stay to the very end of this video, I will have a video of how I display them at craft fairs or sending them to customers. Allow your water slides to dry a few hours before you move on to UV resin, the final coats. So I am doing the same thing. I'm adding a big dollop to the middle and then pulling it out the edge. However, once you see the edges start to pull back, add some more in the middle. I'm trying to dome it out now, so I'm going to be adding a lot more than I did that first round. If you have anything near the edges that you had to cut away, make sure you have that completely sealed. If you have to do a second coat because it pulled back a little around those edges, that's fine. Do a second coat. Just don't add as much as you did this time. You won't need as much. This is the doming assistant from Imagination 3Ds. It works great for keychains or pop sockets, but not so great when I'm having it close up to the camera for you to see what I'm doing. You're gonna have this cure for a minimum of three minutes. Longer is not gonna hurt it. Make sure it's fully cured. I'm moving on to my pen. I'm gonna do it the exact same way I did the first couple coats. Thin coats, two to three coats until you don't feel any of that vinyl or rough spots or anything. You want it to be 100% glass smooth. You don't have to add a charm if you don't want. The pen is beautiful as is, so it could be completely done now. But if you're wanting to add a charm, I'm gonna use a UV resin again, but I'm gonna be adding these little toggle clasp I got on Amazon. The charm's going to hook onto with the help of a few jump rings. I also got on Amazon these cute little honeycomb and honey bee charms. So how you get this toggle to attach to the top is you're going to add just a little bit of UV resin to that metal part and then attach it to the top of your pin and then cure it for three minutes before you start adding your jump rings and your charms to make sure it's fully attached. I will say also make sure that toggle is centered on the top of your pin because removing it and trying to fix it can damage your pin. I know I did it in that last little clip. I wasn't paying attention and moved too fast to the light. You can add just the bee onto that toggle, which is adorable. You can add the honeycomb and the bee on the same toggle. I've seen people do UV resin on the back of that honeycomb and then attach the bee with a jump ring to the honeycomb itself, not using the toggle at all. But with this design, I thought it was a little much. Maybe if I didn't do as many little bees or honeycomb, it would actually look really adorable. Now 
I know my next project for myself? I'm gonna make myself one because this is too adorable not to have in my house. <laughs> uh, the toggle is not going anywhere, but if it is a really heavy charm or something, you can add an additional coat of UV resin around the edge, cure it just for a little extra security, but depends on how heavy your charms are. I hope you loved this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. Please like, share, subscribe. It means the world to me, as well as anybody who is using those affiliate links in my description. I am so, so, so grateful. Thank you to all. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, please write them in the comments I do write back. I have a display card that I printed off on cardstock. My display card has an attachment place for me to put my business card. I also use Avery labels, just plain mailing labels, and I print all of my social media information on that label, and I add it to the top of my card. You can print these out on that, but I just found it easier to add the label. I then put it in a four by six plastic bag that has an adhesive on the back so I can seal it up. I am sending it out, that's how I send it. If I am taking it to a craft fair, I have these little display tags that are sticky on one side. I hook it to the back of mine so then it can hook on a pegboard or a display board. This makes it look very professional and very easy to look through for customers that are just kind of browsing. My pens, I got these jewelry boxes on Amazon. I made that label again with all of my social medias. You need a brand, 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 brand. It's the best thing I can say to anybody who's starting out. These are cotton filled, so they give cushion to the pens, and this is how I mail out all of my pens. And thank you to all to stay to the nitty gritty end. Until next time.